In the known world of Chimere, the forests, prairies, and wetlands are dominated by Megaraptorans, enormous theropod predators that kill their prey with long clawed hands. Their dominion extends beyond the known world, with the eastern continent, which is larger than Eurasia, also being ruled by these predators. The Kurojaku is the largest theropod to ever evolve, and makes its home in the rivers, estuaries, and along the coasts of the previously mentioned continents and thousands of islands. Although their dominance is now uncontested, their origins were much more humble. For 70 million years, the northern and eastern continents were ruled by tyrants. The dynasty of the Tyrannosaurs was absolute, yet it was more defined by the nesting colonies of the Hadrosaurs than the tyrants traveling between, bringing down any herbivore they could find that was anything less than in perfect health. Horned dinosaurs nested in the highlands, and titanosaurs maintained the forests between. The Carcharodontosaurs were rare, specialized in hunting these titans. There were small theropods, such as abelosaurids and dromaeosaurids, along with small non-therian mammals, but most of the small predators were juvenile tyrannosaurs, and other hunters kept to the fringes of these colonies, fearing the tyrants and surviving on scraps. Entelodonts were one of the only placental mammal clades to find much success as larger animals, serving as a cleanup crew in the hadrosaur colonies. It was a balanced and thriving ecosystem, each member either specialized to this context or relegated to the shadows. As all dynasties do, this complex, continents-wide ecosystem was not to last. Fifteen million years ago, the climate warmed and it became much more arid due to volcanic activity. This set off a chain reaction of the giant titanosaurs going extinct with the climate fluctuating dramatically from the sudden boom of unmanaged forests, and the complex ecosystem built by the hadrosaurs and the tyrants that kept them in check fell apart in a matter of centuries. Their dominion was a castle of cards. Once the context changed, the specializations that led to dominance was their downfall. All the megafauna that had thrived became victims of their own success. The dynastic extinction devastated both continents. For around a million years, Chimere was barren. To replenish the megafauna, the portal to Earth spiked in activity, being more active than it had been in tens of millions of years prior. Many clades of endemic animals and those brought from mid-Miocene Earth vied for dominance both as large predators and dominant herbivores. Large calicotheres, for example, had two million years of dominance, but they were replaced by a new clade of titanosaurs, descended from small titans that had survived in the south of the eastern continent. These titans became giants and resumed their role as gardeners of the Chimeran forests. This helped stabilize the climate, and Chimere began to heal, being ready to establish a new status quo. Parxosaurs, once humble burrowers and wetland specialists, stepped up to the mantle once worn by the hadrosaurs. Their own nesting colonies quickly dominated both continents and many ecosystems. Mammals, both large non-therian of Chimere and eutherian of Earth, became larger in this time, claiming several large herbivore niches of their own. The role of apex predators, however, was still an open contest. The first contenders were the abelosaurids. These ceratosaurs were quite common and already predators of the semi-aquatic parxosaurs, so growing with them was an easy transition. They were heavily armored and proficient brawlers, able to defend their kills confidently. They breed fast and have many offspring. Comfort in wetlands aided this rapid expansion. After only three million years following the dynastic extinction, Several semi-aquatic and terrestrial species were already the size of their tyrant predecessors. The Eudromaeosaurs were quick to follow. A clade of one ton, a clade of half-ton raptors were specialists in the tiny titanosaurs. With small serrated teeth and long jaws, 
They shared much in common with the Carcharodontosaurs that died off with the larger titans, able to saw through armored game. Like the Abelosaurids, as their prey got bigger, so did they. It wasn't long before two clades of theropods had multi-ton representatives. Juveniles do employ their clawed arms and toes in encounters, but for adults, they sacrificed agility for power. Like the Carcharodontosaurs they convergently resemble, these giants are dedicated biters. Theropods were not the only clade to present a contender for the apex predator role. The Entelodonts, once humble scavengers, answered the call with hell pigs the size of an elephant. Lacking light bones and the sophisticated respiration of dinosaurs, they were not as efficient in travel and were never common, and a low rate of reproduction meant they never had a high population. But they were an ever-present terror in the ecologies of the eastern continents. Their bites rivaled the power of tyrants, and they were formidable brawlers, often intimidating competition away from their kills. These three groups, the abelosaurids, the giant raptors, and the outsized hell pigs established a tenuous balance. The abelosaurids were rulers of the wetlands, the giant raptors ran the forests, while the entelodonts and terrestrial abelosaurids were the top predators of the prairies. This system of delicate partitioning came crashing down with the arrival of megaraptorans from the west. The western continent of Arvel was isolated from the portal before the arrival of the Tyrannosaurs. For around 90 million years until the dynastic extinction event, Arvel was defined by the bond between Titanosaurs and Carcharodontosaurs, which were much more common and diverse than on the eastern and northern continents. The massive titans and their shark tooth killers went extinct there too. Left in isolation, the arms race for top predator here was between abelosaurids and a different clade of theropods, the Megaraptorans. In many ways, Megaraptorans have a fairly basal Silurosaurian body plan. They have compact bodies, gracile jaws, and arms ending in long claws. Evolving on a seasonally cold continent, they retained the feathers of other basal Silurosaurs and tyrants. Unlike abelosaurids, Carcharodontosaurs, and Tyrannosaurs, Megaraptorans don't kill with their bite. The Megaraptorans are hands-on killers. They use powerful jaws to establish a grapple. The teeth of Chimera and Megaraptorans are not serrated, instead being conical to better hold onto struggling prey. They then use their long claws to inflict a rapid sequence of deep and precise punctures, leading to substantial organ damage and a quick death especially if the claws open the lungs, windpipe, or heart. Megaraptorans are assassins. This method of attack is simple, yet extremely effective, well employed against large and small game, fast or armored. It wasn't long before Megaraptorans got large and powerful, taking on titanosaurs, crocodiles, and ankylosaurs, and were very intelligent, being proficient in taking out other theropods. Their sense of smell is not terribly keen, but their hearing and sight are comparable to owls and eagles, respectively. Their conical teeth also translate well to semi-aquatic niches, and they are all quite comfortable in the water. As Arvel neared the other continents, the large Megaraptorans were among the first to cross between Arvel and the northern continent. The herbivores there were accustomed to fending off single-point attacks from Entelodonts, giant raptors, and abelosaurids. The unconventional killing style of Megaraptorans proved quite successful. Not only did Megaraptorans perform well in bringing down prey, both in direct conflict and in outcompeting them. The armor of giant abelosaurids is pierced as easily as that of a crocodile. Difficult to cut, but stabbing isn't much of a problem. Although the giant dromies are intelligent and armed with bone-slicing bites, their size makes use of their iconic foot claw pretty useless after they hit a ton of weight at around two years of age, meaning that if a Megaraptoran restrains the head, dispatch can be done with confidence, although getting through their loose and tough throats is no easy feat. Entelodonts like the Bokodu are formidable fighters, with jaws rivaling the tyrants before them in bone-crushing power, 
but their extremely long pregnancies make for low population, and although Megaraptor ants prefer a quick kill, they have astonishing endurance, and their weaponry makes them capable of bringing down even these goliaths of muscle and bad temper. In the span of a million years, Western Megaraptorans went from absent on the northern and eastern realms to the undisputed apex predator in all three continents, in prairie, forest, and wetland habitats. As so often happens after a mass extinction, these humble generalists underwent a dramatic adaptive radiation, swiftly occupying and dominating a wide range of niches. The other three clades of predators each have their surviving representatives, but all are decidedly outnumbered in population and diversity compared to the new monarchs of Kynir. Later this month, we will find out all about the strange and wondrous ways in which these once unassuming theropods thrive in the known world and beyond. That's all for today. Until next time. Cheers, folks!